Hey guys, this is Matt Reisinger and Jordan Smith of The Build Show. We're coming to you from Baltimore, Maryland, where we're at the Remodeling and Deck Expo. And we're going to show you what is cool and the best of here at the show. Let's get going. Coming to you from the Diamond Pier booth, and I actually have the inventor of the product, Mike, with us. Mike, tell me what we're looking at here. So this is the Diamond Pier. It's an alternative to conventional footing. You've dug uh, footings before. We've done a lot of decks over my years as builders, and pain in the butt when you start that deck project is right. digging out all those footers, because you got to go down past the frost line, which right. around here is 48 inches. Right. You've got a 12 or maybe 18 inch pier that you're you're excavating, right. you're dropping a sauna tube in there, and then you're waiting for the inspector the next day to drop a tape down to make sure it's the correct depth before you pour it. It's a lot of work. How does this change that? Okay, it's the Diamond Pier concrete head, four galvanized steel pins, and basically mm -hmm. what you're going to do is you're going to locate this where you want your, your post base to be, and you're going to dig it into about the casting seam. So now instead of digging a 48 inch deep hole, you're digging like an 8 inch or 10 inch deep hole. It's Is that right? 10 by 10 by about 8 inches deep. Oh my that's gosh, it. That's nothing. So one shovel full right in the wheelbarrow, move it away. That's crazy. Then you come in, put a couple of pins in. Hold on. Oh, okay. You can actually move with these pins. Yeah, right? you basically set it in like this, move it around the job site, set it into that hole. Okay. Make sure you're where you want to be. Put all four pins in. And what's this thing weigh that we're uh, we're using here? This is the DP50, and DP is Diamond Pier. 50 is the approximate weight of that concrete head. One inch galvanized pin, 50 inches long. And these are th this is thick gauge steel. This is no light gauge steel. Yeah, either. that's a Schedule 40 sidewall. Okay, that's some fully serious galvanized. Uh, minimum 5500 psi concrete head. Half inch embedded anchor bolt. Um, so I'll set that in the hole. Okay. Make sure I'm centered up. I'll put a level on like this, and then the installation is really where it's all about for the builder. This is so labor efficient. Make sure it's where it wants to be. Mm -hmm. I'll take a 16-pound sledgehammer, start okay. tapping it in. Give me a 12 inches here, 12 inches there. Kind of a lug nut pattern. Yeah, like you're tightening up your tire lugs. Right, just get it set there. Okay, and Once that I, way you can also make sure it's level, right? That's right, and if it comes out of level, you just use the pins to push it back. Okay. A lot of leverage there, just flip that torpedo level nothing to it. Once you get that 12 inches all the way around, then you're gonna come over here with a 35 pound jackhammer. Gotcha, so you got a Boss jackhammer and you got a special tip on there though, right? Right, we've got a custom driver bit with an inch and eighth he uh, hex shaft mm -hmm. and basically it's got a center pin to keep it on the, on the pin and it's cupped. Gotcha. So just before I hit that top, I'll stop and you just get on there and you drive them in. Again, and same thing, you're going to go one at a time, right. a little bit at a time. Foot and a half all the way around. 20 minutes later, even faster in sandy soils, you got a code compliant footer in the ground. And you're ready to build on it at that time? Put that Simpson bracket on there, your six by six post base, Holy and cow. off you go. Now that's fast. I mean, that could literally save you maybe two days of construction. At time least on a, a day, build. and a lot of times two. Plus, plus, you can actually order these from your deck supplier, right? Like that's in Austin. Right. I actually, this is crazy, but I saw this when I was visiting Timbertown, my local deck supplier, two weeks ago. And I, I said to the guy I was walking the yard with, what is this? I've never seen this before. Right, right. This is pretty cool. Yeah. Now, what's the difference in these two heads we're seeing here, Mike? All right, so we got a couple of sizes. So the DP50, so DP is Diamond Pier, 50 is approximately that head. This will handle most deck loads, up to about 3,300 pounds. Okay. If you have a higher load, Maybe you got a roof load or you've got a jacuzzi on the deck or an outdoor kitchen. Yep. People are doing all kinds of stuff with their deck now. You go to the higher one. This will yeah. take about 60, almost 6,400 pounds. That's pretty cool. Um, it also has a 5 8 inch anchor bolt. So if you're doing construction in a high wind zone along the coast um, where you want to have a, a, a stronger connection detail, the 5 inch inch anchor bolt gives you that ability to do that. That's pretty cool. And then. This is kind of neat. You've got a cap to finish that off, but your inspector is going to pull that off yep. and drop his tape down there and make sure that he's got that full depth. Yeah, right? that's. I forgot to mention that earlier. Attached to every head when it ships is a baggie 
and in the baggie you've got the caps to finish it off, but more importantly the inspector plugs. These are put on the drive end of the pin to keep them soil free. Okay, so when you push that pin in with that hammer, this is going to keep them from filling with soil. Right, and so the code official just comes and runs a tape measure down and inspects it. That's pretty cool, and then so, you cap it because we don't want water down in there later. That's right. So instead of having the, ins the inspector come in like after you've dug the hole, they can do the footing inspection at the same time the final is done, um, saving everyone cool. a ton of time. Oh yeah. Also, we don't talk that much about it um, in this interview, but it's code compliant and it's green. So you're not disturbing water flows, you're not disturbing soils. Yeah. I know in your neck of the woods in Austin, um, we're actually getting recommended by the city arborist yeah. in the critical tree zone of the heritage trees. Yeah, because think about how little you're excavating uh, on here versus when you're when you're digging that big pier. You've got right. tons of excavation. You're breaking all kinds of roots. That's right. Whereas this is really going to lightly sit on the soil. That's impressive. Yeah. Uh, now I know that we're not we're at the deck show, so we're focusing on decks, but. Give us a little uh, preview of what else uh, the builders uh, who are watching this could uh, hear from you guys. Yeah, okay, so we're a technology business and we're always thinking about new things. Uh -huh. So uh, we were talking a little bit earlier about um, other products. So we have a new steel product called Foundation Frame that'll take a full home. Um, and in fact, there's one in uh, Bastrop County. How about that, uh, right outside, outside of, of me in Texas? Uh, we won't get into that in today's video, but tell people how they can find out more about both these products. Okay, Mike. so for Diamond Pier, all the information on installation, retailers, code compliance, go to diamondpiers.com or just give us a call. And for Foundation Frame, it's foundationframe.net. So, two last quick questions, which I think people are going to be thinking. Uh, any issues with frost on these and frost heave, number one? And number two, what about rocky areas? Okay, two great questions. So for frost heave, because we're not changing soil compaction or water flows, mm -hmm. and there's really, it's almost like a virtual base area, yep. they perform as well or better than conventional piers and frost zones. Wow. And we've got about 200,000 in the ground now, so we really know that they perform well. That's incredible. And what frost depth can you go down to? Uh, the maximum is 60 inches that we've tested in. Okay, so there's some, there's some cold Canada climates that right. you can still use these in. And as far as uh, rocks or shallow bedrock, we don't recommend it in extremely stony soils yeah. or we you know you have shallow bedrock. All right, because you're going to end up bending your pins. Yeah, that we need about 36 to 48 inches of penetrable soils uh, to, to, to properly install yeah, the to system. to properly pin that in there. That's yeah. right. Man, very cool, Mike. Thanks so much, guys. Go to their website. We'll see you later. I'm going to be building a house for the Jolly Green Giant, and I believe this is the screw that I'll be using right here. Coming to you from the SPAX booth, and these guys have some really interesting stuff. You would think that screws, all the technology has been invented 100 years ago, but in fact, these guys have some really cool stuff. Check this out. Obviously not a real screw. This is a blow-up, but you can see what's interesting with these guys on the tip design. They've got these serrations down here at the tip, They've also got a square shank instead of a round shank, which basically means that when you're pre, you don't need to pre-drill. When this thing screws in, it's cutting the wood fibers. It's making its own path for that screw to go in. Very cool. And let's show you what that actually looks like. So for instance, a couple screws that I thought were interesting at their booth. Let's start with this one right here. This is a screw that's meant for MDF and hardwoods. And check this out, really thin shank, and then this really interesting cutting tip. It kind of looks like a point of an arrow here. Let's actually put one in. They tell me that if we screw it right up on the edge here on this hardwood, because it's screwing its own path, always helps to have it forward, not reverse. Look at that, no pre-drilling. Nice, nice path, and let's actually sink that in there. Look at that, all the way up to the edge, no blowout. That's pretty cool. That's an impressive little screw. Okay, the next thing I thought was cool is they've got this screw for decks in both stainless and their HCRX coating, which is a really impressive, almost the, the um, corrosion resistance of stainless, not quite, but much better than a standard hot dipped. But this is interesting on this one, check this out. You put the screw in, this is their T20 bit, easily on hardwoods, no big deal, but they call this a T-Star Plus bit. It's kind of hard to tell, but there's a little dimple on the bit and on the fastener, which allows you to get it in further. And check out this demo. This is something I've had problems with a bunch on stainless screws. Let me put one more in and I will show you. On stainless screws, because the stainless is a little softer than a steel screw, one issue I've had in the past, especially with uh, square drives, 
is that the bit can get get hollowed out and then you're having a hard time getting it out. But check this out. Even though we hollowed that out, it comes right out. And I'll even show you that we can put it right back in. Look at that. That's crazy. Even though I hollowed and wallowed that bit out, we can still get it out. I remember I had a deck job a couple years ago with some stainless square drive screws and removing that deck later was like a two day job because we couldn't get that fastener to work. Looks like we should have used SPACs. Impressive. Last thing I want to mention over here at this booth, they've got that same technology that you saw in those other screws for lag. So here's kind of your standard hot dip lag right there. Their version, much thinner, you'd think it would be weaker, but in fact, it's stronger in all counts. Better holdout strength, or better pullout strength, I should say, and better shear value. Plus, it's got those deep threads with that tip, so this is gonna go in much easier on, let's say, a deck ledger or some other project where you typically use this fat daddy. That one's gonna go in much easier. I'm sure their website's probably spax.com or something like that. We'll put a link in the description, but let's see what else we can find here at their Modeling and Deck Expo. Woo, the Modeling and Deck Show. Sure is fun seeing all these vendors and seeing the new things out there, but sometimes the samples are a bear. I'm not exactly sure how I'm gonna fit this in my overhead bin on the way back to Texas. Wanted to sit that down for a minute. Coming to you from the Screenies booth. Check this out, guys. No screen that I've seen can do this before. This is a real drywall mud bucket, and look at that. It is holding it up. Totally different than any screen system I've seen before. Now, I've done a lot of screen porches over the years. And frankly, screen porches are a bit of a pain. You've got a lot of finished carpenter time getting all those screen openings, and then you're making stops. You're making sure that it's waterproof correctly so it doesn't rot. And then you're getting a local screen guy to make screens for all those openings. They're expensive and they're a lot of work. Check these guys out. They have solved several of those problems. What you're seeing here is a system that's what this is right here, that's aluminum, and it has kind of a nub on there that has a PVC cap that fits on. So now when you put your screen on there and you snap your cap down, let's see if I'm hopefully doing this right, it snaps on and it makes a super tight screen, and that's what you're seeing here. So tight, in fact, that this drywall bucket is totally held up. Now think about how most decks, or pardon me, how most screen porches are built. They're either stapling on the screen, terrible idea, you can never get it tight enough, or they're using these small openings because you gotta put an actual screen with usually an aluminum frame on it. In this case, these guys can do massive openings. They've got a little literature over here that shows you can do a 150 square foot screen. Compare that to most screens, which are like maybe 45 square feet, you can do really big openings. They also have some pictures of uh, some interesting installs where you can do a radius. Check this out, you can get a radius model. And you can even do it to follow the contour of like, let's say steps. If you've got an outdoor concrete step area, you can follow that screen as it steps down. Very cool stuff. Now it's not inexpensive, but in the scheme of things, not bad. These two pieces together, the screws, this base piece and the vinyl cap, about $2 to maybe $2.25 per linear foot. And then you gotta buy the screen the, again, the install is going to be way easier though than the traditional method. Check this out, guys. Pretty impressive product, Screenies. Hey, guys, coming to you from the Camo Fasteners booth, where if you're going to be doing a 20-quarter ASIC job, they've got the screw for you. <laughs> Just kidding. What is this, Greg? What are we looking at here? All right, Matt, this is a blown-up version of our patented edge screw. Just, it's just a nice size to be able to show customers the features of the screw. A nice trim T15 drive, mm -hmm. reverse upper threads for pull down power, aggressive lower, lower threads, and the real key to the screw is the rake tip, which allows us to go to the, uh, the side of the board, rake the surface, actually auger material out before the screw goes in. That allows us to go really into any material without splitting or breaking the product. It's and, a good yeah. product, Greg. You know, we just did an ASIC deck in Texas with this and really liked it. It was our first camo install. But I thought this display right here was really interesting. We're looking at some grade boards. What is this here, Greg? Yeah, right. So this is your typical uh, southern yellow pine uh, weathered deck. We installed this in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, left it out for about three years just to see what would happen. Uh, we installed one half of this deck here, as you see, with, with a typical bugle head, screw, yep. face fastened, um, and then the other half of the deck uh, with the edge fastener. 
Um, so you can see the edge fastener gives you a nice hidden look, but not only that, it takes away all the cracking and splitting that's caused mm -hmm. by fasteners when you go through the surface. Still about 70% of decks that are installed are treated lumber, yeah. and so edge is a great solution for those installations. That's pretty cool. Yeah. And with the camo fasteners that I used on that AZEC deck, it pre-spaced them to the correct spacing because, of course, the AZEC's not going to move. Correct. But when you're doing a treated deck, you got to know that those boards are going to shrink a little bit on you. You guys have any solutions right, for that? Right, yeah. Generally treated, it gets installed pretty wet, depending on where you're buying the treated from. Uh, and, and guys like to install that really with a, with a real narrow gap or no gap at all. We've got the Pro X1 tool here, which is a great, a great tool for installing treated lumber. Uh, this will not only when you put it on the board with screw guides, put the screw where it needs to go, but it also spaces the boards for you so you get a nice uniform spacing all the way across your deck as you do the install. Nice. And let's go over to the other display and show you one other option from the camo guys. All right, Greg, so if you're doing a treated deck and you're not going to space it, though, tell me about some solutions for that. Yeah, great point. Uh, a lot of builders that are installing treated like to leave no gap between the boards. And so for that type of installation, we have our, our Edge Pro tool. Uh, so this really takes a couple things into consideration. First of all, speed. Uh, it's collated, as you can see. Yeah, you got a big so old same, strip. Same edge screw as we use over there by hand, but we've collated it, 50 screws per strip. Uh, and then it's fed through a mechanical feed tool with a uh, Milwaukee driver, real high RPMs, fast. So from a speed standpoint, it's awesome. It also gets guys off their knees, makes yeah, it easier for nice. the work to death. Show us how it works. Yeah, absolutely. Oh yeah, super quick. And again, it's doing that on the side there, so you don't have anything to catch your toes on the top. And you're doing it from the top side too, you're not getting down to your knees. Absolutely. Cool stuff. Hey Greg, how can people find you guys on the web? So we're at uh, camelfasteners.com. Camo Fasteners. website right there, yeah, absolutely. And then all, for me, all my local guys uh, stock camo. So for uh, the guys at Timbertown and Austin, if you're shopping there, they've got camo right on the shelf ready to go. You're gonna find this all across the country. It's a, this is a popular fastening okay. system that honestly I didn't know about until just a couple months ago. Good stuff. Right. Thanks, Thank Greg. Appreciate, appreciate it. You. We'll see you soon. I was walking the show floor and guess who I ran into? Brent Hall. Have you seen his show on History Channel? Lone Star Restoration. He is a fantastic restoration contractor. Also does new builds like me yep. up in Fort Worth. So he's just north of me in Texas. Crazy all these Texas guys are here. Brent, what is the best of for the show when it comes to uh, what you've seen so far? So, uh, some good stuff here. Uh, obviously, I'm partial to these guys, Windsor One. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's a lot of, uh, you know, fake products out there. There's a lot of faux wood, yep. was wood uh, kind of products. And, and even plastics that are meant to look like stone. And so, being the preservation guy, right? Yep. Being the, you know, purist, um, I'm, uh, you know, anxious about those yeah. kind of products. Yeah. And so when there is a all wood product, yeah. right, yeah. that, uh, you know, just is built to last, yeah, I just love it. Yeah. So Windsor is one of those products. And uh, by the way, a bunch of their profiles, actually Brent worked on, developed these profiles. He's a, he's a, a true studied preservation guy. So he's got some really cool stuff in their catalog. But as we talked about this earlier, uh, you know, Brent, one of the things you said is that a lot of these products have moved towards an installer rather than a craftsman. And what's, what's the difference between an installer and a craftsman in your mind? So, um, you know, 200 years ago, right, you build a door and to install it in a house and you're actually taking raw materials, yep. um, you know, crafting the door, designing the door, putting it together, you know, putting it in the wall, mm -hmm. everything else, painting it, probably putting the hardware on it, everything there, right? Yep. Today, you get a pre-finished, pre-installed, pre-hardware door <laughs> that you just tip into an opening, yeah, right? And pin nail it <laughs> in. Pin nail it in. So what's happened is, is that Craftsman, what used to be crafted is now an installed product, yeah, right? Yeah. And so too much of the stuff, or not too much, some of the things here are made to be installed as opposed to being crafted. Yeah. So that's why I tend to fall back on a real product, a real wood product mm. that you know, like we were talking, you can actually uh, cut it, yeah. you can route it, shape it, mill it, mill it, right, into something that's real, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. with our work, we're, we're basically matching historic precedent, right? Mm -hmm. we're, we're looking back the way things were and we're matching those things. And so, you know, I know that's not for everybody, but when you get into a product like this, uh, 
it just you know warms my heart. And these guys care about craftsmanship. You know, there's some people here that uh, that do are fighting for craft, yep. and that's what yep. really needs to happen because we're being pushed towards a uh, all install market, and that's not good for craftsmen. And I would tell you, Brent, too. You know, I go to a lot of different shows, and the JLC Live, the Monocling yep. Deck Expo. There's really a push towards craftsmanship again. And I love seeing that. And Windsor One's a big part of that. Uh, the guys at Phone Home Building are a big part of that with Keep Craft Alive. A lot of the tool manufacturers are really into that. And I love seeing that that younger generation is now attending these shows of that kind of millennial builder, that 20 to maybe 35 year old builder that was absent at these shows 10 years ago is showing up today. They care about doing a good job. They care about craftsmanship. Uh, wearing bags is cool again. And so I think our future is in good hands with some of these younger guys. Yeah, I agree. And I think that what's going to happen is, is, is that these products, okay, tend to, that are installable, tend to look homogenous. They all look the same. Yep. And customers aren't going to put up with that. Customers yep. really want things that are unique and different. And craftsmen are able to take products like this and really do interesting, fun things with them, yeah. which is better, right? Totally. And totally. another great thing that Windsor does is they have a hat uh, it says, make craftsmanship great again. Uh, Jordan has one of those. Yeah, if you want to get one of those, you get one from Windsor. They're great. That's pretty cool. So, yeah. so quick plug on Windsor then. What is it about their products that you like, Ren? What separates them from other guys out there? So, look, in the reality today, we can't get wood as good as it used to be, right? We yep. can't get wood. Um, 100 year old pine is not available. Yeah, vertical grain, you know, yeah. uh, virgin growth pine. So what these guys have done is they've taken radiata pine, they buy uh, in, in plantation, and they finger join it and cut out the knots and things like that. They treat it so that it lasts forever, but you're really dealing with one western pine that's been treated and, you know, 30 year guarantee against rot and, and you know, insects and everything else. So. And then they're priming all the sides that's coming out to the job site. Right. And then for a guy like you who's doing design and actually building on the job site, you know, you get a piece of three quarter or a five quarter piece, you decide, hey, you don't want to put a chamfer on that. You're not saying, well, how do I get the tool that's going to put a chamfer on the plastic board or yeah. the cement board? Right. <laughs> it's real wood. You yeah. know, all my carbide tips work on this. Correct. Exactly. It's cool stuff. And hand tools work on it, too. And hand so, tools, that's yeah, right. Exactly. Uh, you can probably find their website on windsor1.com or yep. something like yep, that. Yeah, that's it. Um, but Brent, thanks for seeing me, Yeah, man. good seeing you. Hopefully, we're going to get up to uh, Fort Worth and shoot some video That'd at Brent's fun. job. That'd be fun. He's got some jobs. cool stuff happening yeah. in Fort Worth, so stay tuned on that. Otherwise, we'll see you more from the Remolligan Deck Expo. So we couldn't film everything. Thing, but Matt, what else did you see? I'll tell you, Jordan, the show was big this year. I was impressed. You know, there was a lot of stuff that we couldn't film that we just didn't have time. Like I saw a really interesting steel deck system. I saw some ventilation baffles that I'd never seen before. Um, some interesting building science products. So the show was big this year. I was impressed. The other thing, Jordan, that I caught, I don't know if you did, but there was really that 35 and under crowd yeah. here that I feel like has been missing over the last maybe five or 10 years that really showed up to this. I think the JLC Live Remodeling and Deck guys do a great job of reaching out to that next generation of builder behind us and drawing them in, yeah, so that's the, really cool. The social media side of it has really drawn in the younger crowd. I know mm -hmm. that I'm shooting a couple of videos with Toolaholic, yep. and he's got 200,000 followers on Instagram, and it's all about construction tools, and most of his followers are those younger, that's right. that younger generation. That kind of 20 to 35 really year cool. old crowd. Yep. It's good stuff. Hey, if you haven't seen Jordan's channel, make sure you go over there. There'll be a link because Jordan shot a bunch of videos with him and with some other guys. Best of, what are some cool tools? So be sure to check that out. Otherwise, follow Jordan and I on Instagram. And follow you, me on Twitter. And if you missed us here at this show, oh, that's right. we're going to be everywhere in the next few months. <laughs> we've got a lot. Kukin Brothers coming up in November. We've got JLC live in Portland coming up in December. Yep. And then we have got uh, IBS in February. February of next year, and then back out to the East Coast to JLC Live on the East Coast in, in March. In March, Providence, Rhode Island. Providence, Rhode Island. There'll be a link to a bunch of those in the description, guys. We'd love to have you come out to one of these shows and, and meet us. We've got some Instagram meetups at those events as well, so stay tuned for future announcements on that. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on the Build Show.